Public Affairs Analyst Chukuma Kenwa joins me now to talk on the Twitter face-off. Good to have you join us, Chukuma Kenwa. Yeah, thank you so much. So you, you listened to the um, back and forth there between the um, committee, the, the National Assembly Committee, and then the Minister of Information and Culture. What do you make of that, and especially the statement made by the Minister of Information and Culture? Yeah, I think uh, it is very clear for us to understand. Twitter is just a platform, so it's needless to accuse Twitter as what is responsible for the disunity we've seen. There are issues, germane issues, that before now Nigerians have expressed as concerns, such as esteeming certain persons from one part of the country as more important than the others more or less like the landlords and the others are tenants. These are German issues. Jack Dorsey didn't uh, uh, initiate those issues. Those issues are in the minds of Nigerians. And I think one of the things that the Minister of Information need to appreciate is that social media platforms are feedback platforms. They offer open source intelligence to the government to gauge the temperature in the land. Before you be, uh, the, 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 the president in March, he needed the, the, the confidence of votes of the people. And now that he is the president, he needs the vote of confidence. And how you can actually ensure that you keep to that pace is by gauging the temperature, understanding the concerns of the citizens, and addressing it. That, unfortunately, has been gagged in one of the platforms. And I hope he doesn't go on with the rest like he threatened on some other micro-blogging platforms. And while that was going on, the ECOWAS Court of Justice was given a ruling um, restricting the federal government from making arrests uh, or arresting anyone who uses Twitter because of, uh, the government has, had threatened earlier that it was going to do that. Um, so what difference will that make, that ruling make in this situation? Yeah, I think it, it could make a whole lot of difference only if the government of the day is ready to obey court orders. Uh, the current administration has been notable for disregard for court orders, and we do hope they are going to look into this one. But of course, it's uh, uh, not really practicable to get uh, uh, all those uh, that are currently using Twitter across the nation, like you want to get all of them prosecuted. I think the major target will now be the media houses, of course, those stakeholders that can be easily gagged by, you know, uh, uh, brought to book by the government. But I think uh, with this uh, 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 court injunction, we expect and we call on the federal government to duly respect it. And let me now respond to a statement credited by, uh, uh, to the uh, House of Rep member uh, representing uh, Mr. President. We are in a global village. We live in a new dispensation, and it's an irreversible reaction. The world has gone so far. Even at the level of United Nations now, they talk about neoteric diplomacy, the fourth dimension to diplomacy, and that's all about the online environment. And Nigeria cannot be left out. Whether Nigeria ca can be or cannot be left out will depend on the meeting um, or the, uh, the uh, meeting that is now a proposed meeting rather between the federal government and Twitter. A delegation has been put in place um, and whatever comes out of that meeting will determine whether the suspension is going to go on or Twitter is willing to comply. So w what are you expecting from that meeting? As a matter of fact, I expect as I expect beyond like uh, just get coming up with formalities to ensure the immediate resumption of activities and you know unbanning of Twitter, uh, even though the minister chose to use the word suspension. And most importantly, because when you look at the team of Nigerians, our elders in the land that will be engaging with very young minds, minds like uh, uh, Jack Dorsey, I'm also thinking of being able to liaise with them to think of how they can also encourage young Nigerians who are quite innovative to tow the digital path that can actually position our economy globally. Tech and information accounts for 65% of global economy and Nigeria population cannot be left alone. We, I mean the democracy, the demography is in our favor being that we have a youthful population. So I'm thinking that that meeting should even go beyond on banning Twitter to also discussing business on how can young persons tap into the digital revolution which people in the West are currently leading. And, and that also plays into the issues around whether social media platforms will now be registered in the country because that's the plan 
um, as the federal government has stated. Uh, if this, is, whether this is resolved or not with Twitter, if the federal government decides to uh, to now register or, or ensure that all social media platforms and OTTs are registered in the country, what do you think that would be the implication of that? Even though many people have continued to say, look, it does infringe on um, the the right of exp freedom of expression. Well, I don't, I don't think it's a wrong move to, uh, for them, of course, to be incorporated in Nigeria. But, of course, considering the timing and the actions or assumptions that led to the whole uh, uh, drama we all see, I think the timing is wrong because, of course, when you uh, follow the wrong path and try to like, make things all right, of course, two wrongs cannot make it right. But, of course, it's what we expect that these digital giants would, of course, be registered within the country. They should, of course, be regulated in some regard. But I want to maintain that what the government just did, it's more or less like gagging free speech. And we've seen that this government from past two years with all of the bills, starting from all of the, the Senate to the House of Rep, uncomfortable with the way people are reacting. The, the harsh realities are on ground. And Nigerians have the right. That is the only way, truly, you can actually improve on the conditions of Nigeria. One of the things that is very scarce in the place of power is truth. Your ministers wouldn't tell you that truth, but the Nigerians that are on the streets that know what it means now to get a cup of gari, who know what it means to buy a tomato, they fear the harsh reality, you know, the cost of affording good medical health care, education, they know the harsh realities, and they have that in their level, right, because of course they are your employers, they are the landlords, they are the owners of the nation, and, 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 and we must put that all right, because Nigerians have that right to respond to issues that matter most to them. Public Affairs Analyst Chukuma Kewa, thanks for talking to us.